My boy Trey. Yo, we got a um text me. We got a link for a game. We gotta do a game, yo. Like a walkthrough. Like a two player or something like that. Hit me up. Cause we definitely gotta do some streams together. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Let's go with you, Melvin. Alexis. Stanley worked for a... Bro, we're not doing this again. We're not doing this again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. New content. I was watching the back rooms. Found footage. Are you talking about from oh, last time, Melvin? New content? What does that mean? New content. I don't know if they meant this game to be scary, but. He said I mess with this game a lot. Now this, he be, um, what's the word? Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. You make me feel dumb. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. All right, let's see. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. They said they took like five years to make this game or something like that, um, or four. Is it broken? What's going on here? Should we, should we be moving somewhere or, or oh, here we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. I promise that this game got a jump scare in it. It's going to be a mm. real quick screen. Mm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them. Um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right, let's see. All right. All right, all right, let's see, it's the jump circle. I don't like that, but I gotta do it. Are we doing it like this? You're not catching me today. Right, that's too much. Bro. If the lights turn off, That is that to make me feel like a dummy. What an is, idiot I am. Is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another I'm elevator. A, I'm Stanley, an idiot. I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if, oh wait, there's more. Very good, yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's Not... see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. 
Not gonna lie, you talk too much. I feel like playing a scary game after this, not gonna lie. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, yes. I'm looking right now at the game's trophies, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test trophy, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? You gonna give me a chance to talk? This game is insulting my intelligence. I'm not gonna lie to you. He just talking words around my head. But this ain't the beginning of the game. Bro, stop closing the door. I wish I could read these. I think that made the game more interesting. This is where my office is. I'm four two seven. No, I can't find can I go back through this door. I hate when games do stuff like that. Psst. Stanley, come over here in the vent. I want to show you something. These nuts, right? I got a decision now. Cause this is gonna bring me right back to the uh, meeting room, so I might as well go this way. I'm surprised I played the game one time and I remember that much. Can't pick none of that up. I said I'm back. What's good with you, Melvin? I've seen your comment before, but this dude has talked too much. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Not gonna lie, if this is the best experience you had in life, you had a bad one. Not to be that guy, but who am I to judge? You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap PlayStation port? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game attack. originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Now oh, this is the room before the timer went off. Okay. I'm surprised now I played this game one time I remember all of this. Hmm. Let's see what else we got. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism, 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. 
It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now, a lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Not gonna lie, you bore me with these long passage. With the long passage, whatever. I get my lingo. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. All they had to do was transport it in pristine condition along to the PlayStation, boom, done. And they couldn't even do that. Couldn't resist the urge to go meddling with a beloved franchise. Wait, hey, why am I going back through the door? Oh, I gotta go through this one. How do I jump? Wait, can I jump? They're trolling me. This is the only game I ever played that make me feel dumb. Well, no, that's, that's not the only game. There's got to be a way in here. Probably not. You said top five? Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh no, oh god no, Stanley. It's a collection of reviews from Pressurized Gas, the extremely popular online storefront for computer games. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny with his humor and dialogue common. proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that this I can't like even GTA. imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. That place on GTA, if y'all know what I'm talking about. For like survival mode, it's definitely look like it. Like a crouch. That's about it. Oh, I can't even read that. Okay, let's see what this one says. Oh, no. Well, the idea for the game is good, and no, 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 no. for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell yeah. me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. You are. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Nah, this game is fire. You just talk too much, bro. Not gonna lie. What games you play? Uh, I play everything. That's a terrible way to say it, but I just play any game, honestly. I beat GTA Story Mode. How long did it take you to beat it? What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. Or oh, are we getting the option to get a button. skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then... Then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. 
Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you with just the push of a button, you Oh wow, my bad, bro. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. My bad, I decided to do it <laughs> well, again. Well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But my that's bad. the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's oh, right. I got a habit, my bad. Okay, man. welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really front. only so much I can ramble on Bro, to myself the about. Door away. It's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest... They took the door Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've oh, just shoot. been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really truly talking. getting longer, and my god, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. Yeah, I realize I've looked that. at it from every angle. I've checked every Bro. one of those walls a thousand times, and there's no door, Stanley. There's I'm no to, door. There's I'm just to crawl through the vent now. That's gonna kill me. If you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I don't either. Oh, Stanley, uh, you're back. Uh, I got pause for a second. You and the crew, yeah, uh, MRA, just like a uh, chase one here too. Just cut him off. I wish, man. Go back. Oh my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week or two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been? No, it doesn't. Now you're gonna be petty oh, and throw me in a black room. Hello, it's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not for one entire year? Did Let I be GTA story? To begin um, with, there is only regret. There I don't is think only so. the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. I have to listen to him talk months. this whole time. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a... Bro, I didn't pay $25 to listen to you talk. Ah, right, you could talk, bro. My bad. I'm not turning around, bro. I know this ain't no scary game, but I ain't turning around. Now nah, I'm a gamer, I do. You know, what? I'm gonna show y'all something to do in a scary game. Well, it's not a scary game, but I'm gonna give y'all some tips. When approaching, just do this. All right, we go. Bro, come on, man. It's too loud.
but they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs-down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us, now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency, it's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. Bro, stop talking. No, I thought he died low-key or something. He said, I got to go. My mom wants me. All right, Melvin. And then you've been as my guy. Bro. The end Even. is never the end, 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 is never the end. Bro, this game is testing my patience, man. Brian never had my buttons pushed, and he not even doing that much. He said, uh, "Skip that, man. Oh God, it's getting worse." Bro, what are we playing? What the place? Like, what's going on, bro? Yeah, a rapture took place. Bro, what am I like for it in my life or something? He says, sup, I'm sorry, cause I'm not your shit. It's all good, Daniel, man, don't be sorry. Place is much worse than the start. Yeah, I told you the rapture took place. Yep, what I tell y'all. What's this, the Garden of Eden? Or whatever the hell it is. You'll think I've never been to church. Lord, forgive me. I know not what I'm saying. Uh, bro. Can't front. I, I want to play a scary game after this. I want to play a scary game. I'm feeling bold tonight. All right, let's go. Oh, hell no, we not doing that. Skip. 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 Bro. What am I, a ghost? I broke the button too much. I pressed it too much. Adam and Eve gonna pop up. <laughs> Chill, bro. All right, let's see. The hell am I in the wild, wild west? Come on, bro. I can understand uh, developing a game for four years. I ain't gonna lie, that's fire. Wait a second, y'all. I think I know what this is. Nah, that might not gonna sound too far fetched if I say that. Freedom at last. This ain't freedom. This is hell on earth. And All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Now I gotta go to the, um, the storage room. No content. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. 
I don't know if it's going to be the same thing again. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Only because I want to see something. Because I'm starting to understand some freaky stuff they Yet got going on. there was not on. a single person here either. This, this is Feeling important. a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his... Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. There's something in here one of these times. I missed it. There was nothing here. No oh, what's going make, on with you, no bro? To follow, just I an empty broom closet. Bro, you no talk too much. To still be here. Bro, you talk too much. Not gonna lie. What's going on with you? Bro? I see you in a minute. Stay. You want me to stand here? I stand here. I know he's supposed to get like a bucket if I stand here or something. I can't it find the bucket. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. There's something in here. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Why oh, are you really giving me space to talk? I don't know. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? Oh, if I'd no. said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Nah, that's going to throw me in a loop over there. I can't go. Is there a room in here? No, it's not. If it is an ending. Now nah, I did the um, downstairs already multiple times. I do that after I do this one. It's just something in the um, boss's office I need to see right quick. I forgot where it was. It's not the elevator, no. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Wasn't it too shocked? Unraveled, Eight, four, Stanley five. wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark seek Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Bro. Oh. Hold on. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. All right, so now we can't go back to there. Yeah, it's dark, y'all. Descending deeper into the building, so Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of Bro. his job. Why did he feel this now? Why am I competing when for years, to talk with it you? had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Finally a chance to talk. Uh, my bad missing the comments. He said, oh, never mind. Yeah, bro, I ain't see you in a minute, man. I've been lacking on my stream. I got to get back into it. He said, Jazz, yeah, Jazz is not common when you pissed off. He said, go up and down the elevator multiple times. I think it's the end of happy year streamer. Appreciate that, man. I'm going to get back. I know a lot of y'all kept saying I need to stream and stuff like that. So Whoops. I'll get back nope. to it. Uh, never mind. 
Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. Did I get shorter? Bro, I'm telling you, this game has to have a jump scare in it. There's no way they made a game with this atmosphere with no jump scare in it. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive, rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Not gonna lie, I feel like playing Five Nights at Freddy's again, not gonna lie to you. Um, if you go up and down, so go down again. All right, now this would have been an epic jump scare if they would have did. Nah, that's been too obvious. Maybe if they had on like standing in this dark area right here, it would have been fire. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? I'll uh, try it one more time, I see. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? I think this game is just the piss of narrator off. Did you think down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. He says, so what is the Stanley Parable about? Me personally, hold on. I just started playing this game, like last stream. I just think it's a loop to find out what's going on, like he said. I don't know. I feel like this is just a game to troll your intelligence, not gonna lie, because that's all you've been doing to me. Oh my God. It's the boss's office. I thought that was people <sighs> standing right this here. This absolutely changes everything for me. These two. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Bro, what are we playing? Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait. No, I need more time to process. Bro. You gotta have patience playing this game. I can't stand this game, man. Games that tend to show your intelligence, though. Is this All right. Like, yeah. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. All right, let me go piss you off again. Of course, going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, Elevator sure, going now it's obvious, but you have it's to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. I hope you get the right. So am I, what am I supposed to just keep going up and down? 
Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. All right, that, that caught me off guard, not gonna lie, that doom. One more time, I promise. All right, let's see. Why are we going so fast? He said, oh no. Hmm. You know, Why are we going so fast? I just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a minute. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? I could tell you used to get picked up. There on. we go. Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? Are you happy for me because it's a jump scare? To anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I, I mean it. Run this is unique and different. It's okay. not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes yeah. us feel sharp and I'm vital a good and ending, alive. Then. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh good, we're here. All right, now, who gave me this? Duck, if there's a jump scare down this hallway. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. That is seem fishy. You're not even talking no more. I'm hugging on this wall, not gonna lie. Right, we go. Ah, yes, here it is, just through this door. Type of meter? I don't know. Oh, I can't even jump. Wow, what a game. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry, you'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. Okay, I got a good ending. Your voice and you reminds me of misfortune. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I know I got A1 memory. Memory. A1 memory. All right, almonds, chair, gum, nut bar. All right. I still remember the call. So just in case they throw that at me in here. Congratulations. What was it? Almonds, gum, chair. I'm gonna cheer, come table nut bar, okay. I should be good.
You got me walking through a black door. got the most generic face I've ever seen. If I could turn my camera off right now, which I can't do, what would I tell you? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Am I moving Stanley faster? decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Did that give me like a little speed boost or something? Because I wasn't moving like this before. That was cool. Wait, what? Wait, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm only going to play this game for like maybe 20 more minutes because after a while playing this game, it just becomes a headache. I'm not going to lie. I could see about this new content because they put this here for oh, a reason. Good. You Again. noticed my sign. Yes, I have hey, something very exciting to show you. Can you close the door, please? Let's see what she said. I think you got the speed boost. Let me see if the bucket's in that. Um, no, they're going to close the door again. If I do that. Who cares? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't think you get the bucket from doing what Yet I'm doing. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. All right, we Gucci. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. I his boss this is would think something. he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers he blinking mysteriously out of existence you in a single moment from the new contact, for no reason at all. Yeah, I think None so of it too. Made any logical sense. Can't front. We're gonna begin the game again. Oh yeah, I don't know English, guys. I cannot talk today for some reason. All right, let's try that new contact. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Because I know Stanley he's decided to, get to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, good. You notice my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Get the bucket, yeah. Been waiting. Because I know it's like a phone call you're supposed to give the bucket or something like that. What if I got off? You know, this game will make you feel so dumb and smart. Uh, just making sure I can't go back. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. Hmm. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, the Stanley Parable 
two. Ah, you almost got me there. Yes, you see? Isn't okay. this far superior to a measly port with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with oh, a fully this? fledged sequel. An entirely oh, new experience here? built from the ground up. Why there are oh, so many possibilities. Okay. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Yeah, you got Apple products, y'all. Mm, Calling it the work. Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Not gonna lie, I would love to be a developer, a game developer, if we had stuff, like if a room looked like this. Yeah, I'm getting overtime off the butt. It's a MacBook. Oh, yeah, for sure. Can I go back? All right. Can't front. Can't front, Trey. We got to have a, a MRA headquarters like this. Big TVs everywhere. Game tournaments and everything like that. That's coming soon, though. Real soon. Speaking into existence. I can't go nowhere else. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Did y'all just hear that? Hold on. I know y'all hear that like somebody banging on something. Not gonna lie, am I Rana? You would be a great game developer. No, I wouldn't. Everybody, all the stocks will go down. Com game companies gonna be fighting each other that all these, no, I'm playing with you. I think I'd be a good one, so I appreciate that. Who said that? That was you, Duck. You know what? You made my day, my boy. What is this? Transit? I can't get on the bus. All right. New features. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. I mean, I can't jump or do anything, but of his direction. Now, if the game starts me from here every time, this is going to be fire, not going to lie. And this is going to make me stay on the game. I got options. Wait, which way is the bucket? Because I don't want to get locked out and then I can't. I only live for the bucket. Try it here. Where it says the button that says, okay. Am I here on experience? Good game title, maybe. You never know, man. You never know. But if I do make a game, I'm. Let me, I'm gonna screenshot this now. Hold on. Alright, he said, well, that guy talking up something. Yeah, I don't think it's no jump scares or anything in the game, but it creates that um, atmosphere. I'm not going to say nothing. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and pa why did I just start smiling over a bucket? Paradoxical that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. 
You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, yeah, give me the, the bucket. many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is Bro, a perfect give me the solution. Bucket. Come on, give it a try. I just want to take this time to give a special... Oh, got the bucket to get that. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Alright, Doc, appreciate you stopping by for real, man. Enjoy your night or whatever you're going to do. Alright, so let's see what I do with this bucket. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be... Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on get well someday and happy 12th birthday. Which would you go with? I mean, who is this for? Get well someday, happy 12th birthday, Stephanie's. I feel like this is a trick question. You got a demonic laugh. Let's be optimistic. No. Yeah. Wait, does he have a niece, though? But it's a step niece, so it's not really, but. This is like the 2K character when you fret in that mind. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well, someday it is. Now, how you ask for my opinion? Or actually, then? whatever. Maybe I should have gone with. No. Nope, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Oh, I thought he was moving. Like, never mind. Yeah, that's a trap. Oh, I already did the jump circle in the other part. What happens if you I get past her? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. Oh, it was a trick question. Like, how am I supposed to know? Either if you pick a good thing or a bad thing or whatever, he's still going to insult your intelligence, so... I just come to the... Now here's something special. You remember that broken test trophy that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the trophy. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the trophy will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Slender man about to come out this damn machine. Whatever, though. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the trophy is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Yeah, in another four years. Right, let's see what else is interesting what else? in here. What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Ah, collectibles. 
Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. Is that and what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Now that would have been epic if they all just jumped out on me. I'm supposed to be happy. Oh, okay, well, that's how that's it. So, well, Stanley Collectible, yeah. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Mm. Oh, yeah, I gotta go through this way. Ooh. Let's go this way. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Hmm. Is there something at the end of here? Oh, it is. Are you kidding me? I did not see stairs over here. So as much I pay attention. What you talking about? What you said, what was that? Or what was it called? For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Now, if y'all really do that, this game definitely gonna go on my all-time top games. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here. Let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just well, I play along. Be, I promise I you'll Jim. love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear hole. your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, what sleeping Jim and waking as Jim, falling in love and what being heartbroken eat? as Jim, seizing all the world's possibilities as Jim and as Jim watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really truly Jim right now? If so, Jim. <laughs> yes, you see what a thrill, what a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again, do it again. I ain't gonna lie, I used to get a thrill from pressing that um what button was that? I think it was staples, right? That was easy. I used to get a thrill, so I can't complain. Jim. <laughs> It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature Whoa, in the Stanley bro. Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. I don't know, it's gonna be fun some type of way, but that way it ain't gonna be a matter of fact. Nah, I ain't flattering you. Get out of here. Let me see if there's anything in here. If they really would have put your name in here, this game would have been top five. What's that, sir? Whoa there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting the gym button away. Otherwise, soon you'll start to lose all sense of who you actually are. Exactly why you can't never help people. The Mara Jim. <laughs> uh, imagine. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. What is the main thing? I think it's supposed to get to the um, settings room. 
Yeah, because I went over here. No, I didn't go over here. And they just took away the door. Am I bugging y'all? There was definitely a... I don't even care at this point. I don't even know what's real anymore. I'm starting to believe everything this dude is saying, man. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is in fact I'm about to say a hole gator. that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite fall. Oh, here you go, you Charlie. Can this fall for you. Until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. He said, maybe going to infinite. Oh, oh nah. All right, let's just see what happens. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Now, I don't want to do that. Hmm. I want to go to the bottom. Well, I don't mean to be a bummer. But I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. I'll Maybe use do it the on the button. sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Uh, today I feel I feel frisky. I'm good. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's Is possible it that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Why would you like to know? Very deep hole. To be certain, it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... You said okay. die happy with a bucket. Well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. No, it Look, definitely is. I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think I climbed that hole for a million dollars. Nah. Why don't we like just put all five this million. behind us and agree to just call the whole mess? Y'all climbing this for five million? If that five million in your bank account. Go ahead and press the climb this. button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. I want to see who really will climb this. Five million in your bank account to climb this all the way to the top. That's your life you're playing with too. I guess we got to go to the top. Hey, infinite. All right. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. You said nah. You said yeah. What? I'm Sonic and up that junk. Matter of fact, let's do oh, this again. Oh, heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem right. is that you like holes too much. Whoa. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole. You said maybe a little bit more? Not infinite. Well, I suppose once again, there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. <laughs> Some things I better not had say. Enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about. Gosh, how could I have guessed you're back in the hole? If this starts to become a thing where... Wow, okay. Yes, I'm starting to become yeah, extremely no, certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's yeah, going on man. here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back uh, up let's to the see. top. And we'll see if it gets any shorter. 
Well, there it is. The shame oh, of my life has come to haunt me. Yeah, I know why I'm laughing. Not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. I, I just want to piss you off. How is this still appealing to you? I know oh, you're no. obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Not for the lighters. Hole is pretty entertaining, guys. I am out of here. Hmm. Is the um teleport button not working? <clears throat> Obviously it's not. You sure? I'm sure. Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try you it again. For everything. I'm not dumb. Fooled me once. Nah. I got patience. He said, don't maybe stay. I got patience. Nah, I don't. I just know he's going to show me nothing. again. Well, I suppose. I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. I thought he said that. Take much. care, Stanley. <laughs> I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity. It is better than listening to you talk. Boy, I'd have been out of luck if I was the only one in the stream. I would have been sad, not going to lie. I hear steps. Oh, no, that's the bucket. My trusty. It's like waiting. Right. I feel like I'm playing. I don't even know. This is like the Twilight Zone or something. I don't know. It's crazy. Like the only thing I can do is teabag in this game. Oh, if I could move, that would be top five. I ain't finna lie, this is fire. I ain't gonna lie, this is fire. Bro, what your fish look? I'm I'm supposed to be positive. Let's look at bro face. Bro knows. What is good with bro face like? He just got one of them smackable faces. Oh, now we, I don't believe in that. I rebuke that. All right, let's see what this is. Bro, oh, this game is so stupid, yeah. <laughs> you said, why you look like, you look like, hold on. Hold on, we gotta do this again. <laughs> Bro, look like he got boogers on his nose and everything. Nah, we all got a friend that look like this. Ain't nothing wrong with him. He just look a little off. Yeah, I rebuke that too. Bro, what is this? The Undertaker's year? Like, what? Is... What are we in? Death Valley? Like, can we change the scenario? What's this hell to? I'm out. Oh, yeah, I'm rocking with this one. That's what's scare me. I died. 
He looked like he's from San Andreas. Is that Ryan Reynolds? Stanley! Stanley! Oh, good, you're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. You know, it's crazy. I could really just start this game from the beginning if you want to play the trolling game. Okay, you did it for me. You said. He said he had a nerve face. That dude was bothered by everything. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. I just want to take my bucket and go back. I just want to leave. It's one thing I'm missing, I think. It's a settings room, but I don't know if I did everything to get in there yet. Hmm. It's a... Uh... I mean, this only place I can't get in here. Ah, what I did do here? Cause you had a button. Can I press the other one? Come now. You've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly, but we all have to move on from our mistakes. Sure, I don't feel bad about it. I went to the bucket room. Um, where am I missing? I don't know where I'm missing. Oh, I think back down here. I didn't finish. Maybe I do. Bro. There's something I'm missing. What it is, I don't know. Could it be over here? It might be. Yeah, this stuff we gotta be at. I remember going this way. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Hmm. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's seat. not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. So you made me go around the whole map um, just to put it Well, in the uh, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. Ah... <sighs> 
Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Wow. Okay. I see what they're doing here now. I see exactly what they're doing. I gotta plug my controller in. Because if it dies... Alright, let's see. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. <sighs> employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. I'm not gonna say it. listen to that. All right, so still employee four two seven. Nothing ain't changed. All of changed. his coworkers were gone. What Wait. could it mean? Right there Stanley the decided bucket. to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley picked up the bucket. Oh yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? There's some way to get the um... Am I supposed to turn off every computer? It's worth the char. Hmm. I think that door closes if I walk past there. So, let me see something. With the storage in the right door. Yeah, of course, I always like this door. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. So you're talking about this door right here for the right one? I mean, that's what I would think it would have to be then. If you're talking about for a door to go through. Yes, this one. Uh... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. He said to the room with all the boxes. 
Let me go to the left. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Nah, there's a lot of boxes in there. Because I know these doors close. I'm talking about right here. Because I believe this would be the only one. Yeah, this gotta be what you're talking about. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. And I wasn't going to the mirror room. If I do it wrong, I'm just gonna. It's all good, man. Fire me because I remember none of that. Stanley lifted so. the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee hmm. lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Now, when you said the bucket, you're talking about not the bucket, the boxes. Because both of them got boxes in them. But I assume it's this one to go through. That would be my first thought. Go to the room full of boxes. So it's gotta be this one. Oh, that is true, Trey. She definitely was calling somebody else. Hold on, we about to investigate that. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes, go there. Go to the cargo lift. Tony Hawk? They need to make a new Tony Hawk game. That was so random. I don't think I could go through this door. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Is that another guy? <laughs> I need to repeat it to, um, to trace it. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. If I obey, I'm a punk. If I don't, I'm an idiot. Does it really matter at this point? It's in a dark room. Well. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone and it will take us back home where we can go about life together. Nah. That's a little bright. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket.
Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. I'm not ringing the doorbell going to my own place. I told you I would have been way more interesting if I could read like these notes and papers and stuff. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play a scary game after this or something. Like, what am I doing in here? Am I looking for the bucket? To finding the collectibles. Uh, this game stayed doing. Uh, <laughs> we not going. Don't <laughs> don't do me. Don't do me. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Bro. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Damn, bro, you don't be cleaning nothing. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Not gonna lie, Rock was my best friend in second grade, so I ain't judging him with the bucket. You see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from, me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. Oh, I just hit a glitch. Hold on. Oh, I just hit a glitch. It's sad, but I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Oh no. I'm I'm having feelings for the bucket. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. The bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Oh, nah, G. Ain't never that serious. I don't even want to think what just crossed through my head. Just go Stanley, on, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... the 
fuck it in here. Definitely did not. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I want to see something now since I got this bucket. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office... Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your mm. bucket. This is your companion and lifelong okay. friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley. I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. How am I supposed to argue with a broom stick, bro? Okay. I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. There. Now it's settled. No more debate. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well, because I think it's appropriate. You see? <laughs> I feel that it works, because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. It's something that's got to happen for me staying in here. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. I know it's that serious, dog. Hit you with the bot right quick. See if something happens. Alright. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Alright, so now I got this with me. This should make everything better. I guess I don't Stepping know. into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not it? an indication of any human life. Or a Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the Four. bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the oh. bucket's warmth and guiding light 
pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. Eight five. It would be with him always. The no. button would, and he knew it. The Dang, two of them were inseparable. At this point, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Oh, Was no, that's the bucket really... guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Ah. Uh... You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for, for collecting all yeah. of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Beautiful, that might be an understatement, but who am I to judge? It's probably gonna be like my last 15 minutes of playing the this game. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. But now that makes me think that I could do, I could redo everything now because I got the bucket. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Which one do I want to do, though? Because whatever one I do is going to be the last one. So my control or escape. I think I'll go with the mind control to see like a happy ending. And I'm um, 274. Employee number, I think. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that's that me right there. Be fine. 427, 427. I don't see nothing crazy from here. Hmm. Why is that one scratched off, though? Wait, what was that employee number who had the, um, called my wife, whatchamacallit? Well, not my wife, but I think it was like 324 or something like that. I think it's like 324. I know that ain't gonna be done. I think that's it right there. Nah. Yeah, they on some freak type stuff, monitoring everybody like that. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Oh, thank you. This is exactly what I wanted to be. The, proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. 
Two best friends standing in the bucket up against the world. They high-fived in a really oh, cool stop way. Talking. And the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. I mean, I can either die with the bucket or live a good life. Let's go with the good life. I don't know. Yeah, we'll do that one. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip For of real, the evil mind talking. control machine. Freedom Ever. was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, yeah, it was a simple now. life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and to... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Perfect was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms, not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room, but at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Don't have me. Of course. He probably had, he probably he definitely got a lot of money for this, but he had to tell them his life. Room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. This is the first time in it today that they put that on the wall. Warmth I gotta spread do it. through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right, this is going to be the last one I do, and then I'm going to be done with this stream. Yeah, I don't know. I might play some Five Nights. I don't know. I might play a scary game. We'll see how I'm feeling. Let's see. Let's take the other option. That was a great way to get my attention. Games like this just make you play for hours and hours because there's so much to do. Mission status. A large room. Are these more than everything I'm supposed to do? All right. Yeah, I bet it will be a reward. I'm just saying, scary movies too. Oh yeah, it's scary movies and um games is my vibes. I appreciate you, Duck. I said Duck. <clears throat> for real, for real.
Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply uh, because I have no remaining stickers. It, coming to uh, a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Uh, I forgot this is an option to do this too, but I'll do this next stream. And then it's the elevator option I could do with the bucket too. Are we going to do this other one? Stanley into said. his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Dang. Stanley may have Try broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's not, warmth wait. and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. Hold on, this is crazy. And he knew it. The two of them were Did they change the Pascal? At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the oh, tender spiritual gosh. connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the but Stanley ah, the there we go. by sheer luck. My guy. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I'm trying to figure out. He said it was something behind. All right, so this is the last one we're gonna do, and then that's gonna be that for this stream. Yeah, I had got it as soon as I seen he um put it in there. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. Well, at least I got my bucket. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. As long as I got my bucket, I'm good. Die. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Die with honor. Oh, okay. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. Oh, it's two of them. So now she could piss me off, too. This is great. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. This is the Bucket Hall of Fame, right? I ain't gonna lie, that bucket was golden. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Oh, who made you mad this morning? Hmm. Yeah, this is the only way I can go. Right? I know, okay. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. 
It is man who should kneel before the bucket. You want me to risk my life for that bucket on? I can't jump. I ain't gonna make no comments other than that. Oh, wow. Oh, chill out. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. God, man. Yeah, no. I hope she's not talking now. All of this Wait a second. Gone. What could it mean? Should Stanley I have decided to go to the meeting room? Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Should I have restarted the game? In that predicament? I don't know, but... No matter how hard four. Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Let's try something different. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Then I said this was going to be my last time. I don't know why this game is addicting. Stanley picked up the not bucket and smiled. Mind. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Yeah, because it's... All right, this is going to be the last, last time. All right. For real this time. This is going to be the last one. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. He said, for if not, it's okay. Go to the right. We have passed it already. What do you want to see? I could just restart the game, not going to lie. Did you get the collectible in a room full of boxes? No, I haven't. I love watching you, my brother. Appreciate that, for real. What are you talking about, uh, Trey? Because I thought I didn't. Oh, with the boxes, I right, got you. You're talking about where the um, where the crane was, right? Already, this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, the yeah, grabbing that bucket. bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley and... clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. I go right, I believe. Door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. So I'll go my memory and here is. it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it? No, never mind. All the right. bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Jump off the yellow thing. All right. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. Well, I... Dang. Straight to the point, I guess. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. 
This isn't the right office. Is I don't it? get why this is bucket this Stanley's office? is making this game this Where much fun. Where are we going today? The bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. I guarantee I Stanley told you this was my last bucket time. Run to him, telling him that the employee lounge this game is was simply the place to be. It is. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No. Never mind. Who knew bucket a bucket would make wrong. a game fun? Stanley took the door on his left to go no, back, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section no, and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Oh, oh I'm glad you oh, found bad, your way bad, here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. I, I got you after this. I got you after this. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the adventure line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Hey, where you going? Oh, so I have an option to put the bucket in the room or go on. I think I should just keep going. I don't think I should put the bucket back. I think I should put the bucket back. Wee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Oh. Calling me a clown. How hilarious. Nah, we're not doing that. You break it. I'm not that dumb. I'm not that dumb. Cause you're gonna bring me back to the beginning. Hey, this game just makes you come on. Come on, this. Before I started my stream, I had a lot of sanity, had a lot of peaceful stuff going on in my life. But this game is not one of them. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, no. Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. Wait a second. Wasn't this the room when I was in the... Not that room. Don't you get mind. it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Guess the guy has friends. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Can I just die with the... Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. 
sure I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... It's not happening. I got that Assassin's the Creed music destroyer. in the background. My prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you. Tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. Hmm. I guess that really was it. Well, damn, straight to the point. All right, yeah, I'm on. Tell him I said, what's good with him? What's good with you, bro? That's crazy, man. Bro, this game is just like questioning everything I got going on myself. Not gonna lie. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. A good bucket, a, bucket, a strong man. bucket, a humble bucket, a committed bucket, a bucket of culture and distinction. So now they turned off the lights this time. Yeah, for real. Wait. He told me last time to pay attention because it was something right here. There's two of something in here. Stanley touched side. the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right. This was I'm going to go to the meeting room, but Stanley right, sure. had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the, across the whole thing. lounge was simply the place to be. And this one where you'll see him walking by. Well, now to get that one. So. And here it was. About to do. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Bro. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Wait a second. When the arm... Um... Oh, onto that, um, why am I pointing? Yeah, I see what I'm talking about. Onto this, right? I got time at. God damn, I gotta go all the way back. I can't find this. In here, this. said the bucket. Go into this dark room over. Damn. I got time at just right. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself, and constantly... Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. 
And here it was. Had the yeah, bucket no. turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. Right the here. cargo lift. Yes, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up uh... there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because I got bad gone. time. Man. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Uh, so I could just only go through this one door. I could also climb that ramp or something else. Okay, got you. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Well, not like I got an option. Now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Wait, should I go for the right answers or wrong answers only? You gotta let me know. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item one. Is this a bucket? I don't know. You said right? Uh, wait, are you saying right as in right or? Okay, go for right. Just making sure. Trick questions. Correct. It is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Item two, is this a bucket? I mean, I could always get back here and try this again too. Correct. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Item three, is this a bucket? Incorrect. This is a bucket. Come on, bro. This is what I'm talking about. Item four. Is this a bucket? Now, I want to be funny and press this one. I know it could be a bucket. Molded from a bucket. It looked like a bucket. I'm, I'm going to go with, yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, if I was outside, I would think this is a bucket. I would think this is a bucket. Ain't buckets made from like metal? So our car is technically a bucket. We drive buckets. Come on, feel me? Say no, I guess. What I said ain't make no sense. You just got to agree with it. What I tell you? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? 
absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. Yeah, I gotta hear my theory. Yes, this is, is a this bucket. A bucket? It's the same material as a bucket. You feel me? Feel me? Y'all want some? Feel me? So I see a bucket. Correct. This is think, a bucket. What I tell y'all, man? Sometimes you gotta think outside the box, man. Item six. Is this a bucket? I'm just doing this to be an asshole. Trick question. Both. Gotcha. Good, I was optimistic. Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the this next one. Let me see. Should be around here somewhere. That's uh... Two plus two equals nine. Where is it at? I got to put it here somewhere. Can't convince me otherwise. Two plus two is nine. This is... Did he put it in here somewhere? Can I get over here? I can't. Say yes. Okay, you and I both know there isn't anything here. And yeah, I don't is. appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something. And therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Stanley, I can't keep doing this. With the way you're talking. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay. Here we go. I wish you would. What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait. Was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my god. I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful mm. to get some clarity on that issue, but it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what, I'll reset everything and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Wait, did I open up the part where I can see myself walking from the other side? Imagine if you could restart your life at certain moments every time you messed up a sign. Boy. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he... Okay. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those things. Bro, like 30 or 40 minutes ago, I said I was getting off this game. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his lap. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Okay, I didn't get it unlocked where I could see myself on the other side. I don't know how you do that, but... And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no... Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, I didn't. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. 
The cargo lift, yes. Go there. The Go to right. the cargo lift. My guy. What is this, Mirror's Edge? Like, bro, I ain't got no feet. This is wild. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really Clutch. must be a snappier name for these things. What about Clutch. mini stands? My Stanley guy. Stanley figs. Um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. Okay. I didn't even have to crouch. You cannot tell me this don't look like where we found Freddy at on Five Nights at Freddy. So like the same exact area. Day number 295, tape number, <laughs> I don't even know, I've lost track, nothing feels real anymore, the longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes, the sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still I haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful, because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get me. What's that? Who's there? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply... Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Very lucky indeed. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left.
Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Santa, Santa. There is another Stanley engine that we didn't get. Manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. He, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. This is what I meant to do the um the first time. This ending right here. Alright. This is the ending I was trying to do. Stanley and the time. bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. So instead of choosing off, I'm gonna choose on and try to take power. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. All right. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. 
Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? That'd These be crazy questions somebody read standing right there staring at you. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Negative. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would... But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Alright, so... Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the Bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. I'm not trying to lie, these penguins are so bad. Let us check out here. And so that was really it. Every time I say I'm getting off this game, bro. It takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so mag. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Hmm. Now this game is entertaining, not gonna lie. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Wait, what did I think I was doing? I went the wrong way. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. I so I did this already. There's a certain one I'm looking for. It's gone. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley cradled the bucket in a gentle embrace. Protective, yet delicate. Assertive, yet compassionate. Don't think I'm paying attention. I keep switching it up. Okay, that took away the arm. What door is it? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly the to his chest door. and entered the door on his left. Do not select. I see what they're doing. I see exactly what they're doing. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. 
Yeah, we're there for sure. For sure, for sure. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. Wait a second. At this point, I Stanley was so absorbed something. in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is right. certainly the most logical explanation. I'm for real for real this time. Yeah, this is going to be the last one. Because I want to do something that lady has said. And I'm done. Not exactly what I want to do. I want to see if it does anything. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control for Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. The door behind them why. was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had head. every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Oh, you all got that on there. All right, so I'm going to try to do the thing she says. All right, let's try this again. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, yeah, it puts the I'm mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket. But what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. All right, here we go. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. Yeah, I know what I'm doing now. If what I'm thinking Can is you right, see how arrogant it was for Stanley something. to take a bucket like this and to this claim right. it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more... No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. But there is something we can do, something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their... Tr nah, that's exactly what we're going to. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Ah. Yeah. Stanley's bucket, the only co-worker he would ever truly need. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, 
but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply... Is Stanley without the bucket really Stanley at all? No, no, surely not. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket know, turned out to be correct? No. Never mind, the bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked I straight ahead to the opposite to door. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious, he exclaimed. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley! Stanley, it's me! The bucket! Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley! Find me! He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought, and she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work. 
for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself. My life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. I think that's a good way to leave it. Well, not that my boy Stanley had to go out, but... Yeah. All right, child, man. I don't know. It depends on how I'm feeling. If I come back with another stream, but I appreciate everybody stopping by. You know. Got some real ones. So, well, damn, yeah. Boy, how they go out. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <laughs> it would have thought. But I'll catch you on the next one, man. Appreciate y'all.